So in this video, I'm going to talk about the differing cultural perspectives on land. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to go through a series of quotes and then show you how I used it in an example paragraph and break down how I structured my paragraphs in, in the HC. Let's take a look at the first quote. This land is mine All the way to the old fence line so probably the most memorable and memeable quote of the entire film, This Land is Mine. The use of the word mine is very critical to this quote because it is a possessive pronoun and it's conveying the concept of people owning land, people being more powerful than land, which is different in the Aboriginal perspectives as we'll come to see. And fence line is the next most important phrase in this quote, all the way to the old fence line. Fence line, what is a fence? It's a border. Right, a fence line acts as a border. It and what do borders do? They segregate different people. They keep people apart. Not necessarily people, but they separate different things. And it's a symbol of control over something that is yours. Or in this case, it's used as a symbol of control, controlling what is yours. It keeps us safe from them. That's the kind of idea. The descriptive word "old" in front of fence line can be seen as conveying the information that this is very ingrained within Western culture. It's ingrained within the European perspective as represented through the character Jim. Another important thing is the way that Jim actually sings this quote. So how does he sing the quote? Well, he sings it in a high pitch for a male. It's in the tenor male vocal range. It has the effect of proclaiming his control over the land. Okay, next quote. Jim's search party, let's take a look. Okay, so I'm going to focus on this particular still frame from that scene. And the first thing you'll notice is that it's in an extreme wide shot. And usually what extreme wide shots are used for in films is to establish a setting. But there's a more significant reason why it's being used, which I'll get to near the end. The other significant thing is that the men of the search party are walking within a straight line formation. They're searching for Emily here, right? So, and the straight line formation is very, it's very systematic. I cover as much space as possible as they're walking. But what do we notice about the shot well they're all very small in comparison to the vastness of the landscape and that's what i think the extreme wide shot is actually being utilized here it's to show that they are insignificant and powerless compared to the just how incredibly vast the landscape is right they look very small look very weak in comparison this is almost like a foreshadowing of what happens later in the film because they ultimately don't succeed in their mission. The land can almost be conceived as, and English teachers will love this if you say this, the land can be conceived as a character in itself. The moon can be conceived as a character in itself. You know, the land gets the better of the, the humans at the end, right? Because the land is so much more powerful and the humans are so insignificant in comparison to it. Okay, next quote. This land is me, this land owns me. Let's take a look. This land is me, rock, water, Animal tree, they are my song, my beings here where I belong. This land owns me from generations past to infinity. We're all but woman and man. You only fear what you don't understand. Okay, so immediately contrasting to our to the first quote that we looked at is the format, right? This land is me. That's contrasting to the to what Jim said. And more specifically, land is me. It represents the Aboriginal perspective of oneness with the land as opposed to ownership of the land. This land owns me. That's a complete reversal of what Jim was saying, right? This conveys a concept that the land owns people. Whether Albert strictly means it as owning people is kind of irrelevant. It's more that the land is more powerful than people. People are a part of the land. People are a piece of the land. They can't, it's in, in his conception, it's absurd to be able to own a piece of land. You really are better conceived as a piece of the land rather than a separate entity. The way that Albert sings this quote is significant as well and it contrasts to the way that Jim sings. So Albert sings in a much lower pitch, right? This land is me. It's much lower than Jim's. Oh, this land is mine, right? It's a lot lower pitch. It's a lot smoother. It's a lot smoother tone 
uh, it's a lot more gentle. And I think that shows a sort of intimacy with the land and perhaps a little more humble. And that's reflected in this shot here, right? He's also shown not in, a, not in an extreme wide shot, but a wide shot because you can see the way you can tell it's a wide shot is because you can see his entire body in the frame. Uh, except instead of walking in a straight line formation with a bunch of other people, he's walking in lonesome, right? So he's alone. That that sh that has the effect of portraying Albert as more intimately connected with the land, with more intimately connecting with the land that he's standing on, right? Versus this, where it's much more impersonal because each each individual here is just so small within the frame, like we saw with the extreme wide shot here. It's very impersonal. There's not a whole lot of con like, and the fact that they're walking in, a, in like a straight line formation, they're just they're just all like a mind, like I don't want to say mindless, but kind of like a an unthinking piece of of some larger some larger uh, quest, right? Whereas Albert is a person in himself. He's more connected. It's more intimate. Okay, next quote: "Traveling to church scene. This scene is really important. You can use it for a bunch of concepts. You can use it for racism and prejudice. You can use it to talk about land. Uh, you can use it to talk about the similarities between the cultures in terms of." The universal significance of family and life, which I might do in a later video. So let's watch. This is an important one. Let's watch this scene now. Shows a very obvious contrast between the European, uh, between the European family and the Aboriginal family. It shows a contrast in, you know, perceived social status. It shows a contrast in culture, like specifically with relation to land. It shows this idea that Europeans consider themselves above the land. So here's some fluffy English magic that I employed when I was doing my HC, and I said that the fact that the Europeans are like literally physically higher than the land is a metaphor for how they can like they're riding on a horse and cart right it's a it's a metaphor for how they consider themselves figuratively above the land so the the them being literally above the rant, above the land is a also serves as a metaphor for the fact that they consider themselves more powerful than the land they consider themselves to ha be able to have control over the land to be able to own the land whereas the uh, the Aboriginal family is walking instead of riding a horse and cart, right? They're sitting, this like the European family is sitting, riding on a horse and cart, whereas the Aboriginal family is walking. Again, it shows this kind of more intimate connection with the land as opposed to uh, control of the land or being above the land. Okay, so how do we use all of this, or how did I use all of this within uh, an essay? So here's an example paragraph that I wrote that I would have actually used in my HSC. I'll read it first and then I'll notate uh, the structure. Land is of significance to many cultures. However, the attitudes towards what land is varies between these cultures. This idea is explored through the juxtaposition of European attitudes towards the ownership of land and indigenous understanding of oneness with the land in One Night the Moon. The European attitude is expressed through the language of Jim. This land is mine, all the way to the old fence line. If you look forward to nothing else within this course, look forward to all the great memes that will come the day of your paper two surrounding this quote. Anyway, um, the use of a first person possessive pronoun mine conveys ownership of land and the symbol of fence line identifies borders of control. The character sings loudly in a high octave range, which has the effect of stridently proclaiming his power above that of the land. Jim's search party is shown in an extreme wide shot, walking in a straight line formation with a systematic masculine bravado as they seek domination and control over the land. So right there, systematic masculine bravado. You might scoff at me when you hear that, but that's some 
that's some fluffy English language. Now your your markers will reward you highly for that because they think it's sophisticated. So I suggest that you end like what I you'll see here down here as well, symbiotic relationship or wisdom. It's it's basically BS, right? But it, it makes you sound sophisticated. And if you use it correctly, uh, you'll you will get higher marks for that. You know. Okay, next section. The indigenous understanding of the land is expressed tr through the language of Albert. In a stark contrast, Albert sings, This land is me, this land owns me, conveying the message that humans are a part of the land and are insignificant compared to the vastness of the landscape. His voice sings in a more gentle, uh, his voice sings more gently with a low pitch and smooth tone. He is also shown in, a, in wide shots, except he is walking in lonesome. This presents Albert as an intimate piece of the land, seeking to work with it in a symbiotic relationship of wisdom. <laughs> I thought I was pushing it too far when I wrote that, but got good marks. This distinction between cultural identities is, is mirrored in an earlier scene where the two families are shown walking, are, are shown traveling to church. The European family is shown riding a horse and cart, whereas the Aboriginal family is walking. The mise-en scene, English teachers love that technique as well, by the way, conveys a subtle message that the Europeans consider themselves above the land, juxtaposed to the Aboriginal family who are integrated with the land. And in, in conclusion... Land is a significant part of the cultural identity of both European and Indigenous Australians. Jim's perfunctory dismissal of Albert's Indigenous intuitive understanding of the land leads down the wrong path and contributes to the tragic loss of Emily. So what was I thinking when I wrote this paragraph? How did I write this paragraph? By the way, I've put spaces here just for the sake of clarity. Don't actually put spaces within your paragraphs in your actual HC or your trials. They don't like that for whatever reason. Um, first sentence is the idea what i like to refer to as the idea sentence you might your teachers might refer to this more as like a conceptual statement i think idea is more tangible uh, so this is just where you state an idea that is not specific to the text although it might be represented within the text it exists outside in the wider world right it's a concept that exists within the wider world it's not specific to the text so land is of significance to many cultures. So land significant to culture. Uh, however, the attitudes to what land is varies between these cultures. So the two ideas there is land is significant to cultures. The conception of what land is varies between these cultures. Not specific to One Night the Moon yet. Uh, so now the next sentence, link to text. And this is basically how I structured the vast majority of my, um, vast majority of my essays, essay paragraphs rather like the, the body paragraphs. This idea is explored through the juxtaposition of European attitudes towards land. So juxtaposition of the European attitudes towards the ownership of land. Oh, that's gross. European attitudes towards the ownership of land and indigenous and the indigenous understanding of oneness with the land. In the text one night the moon so now I've, I've linked it to the text specifically initially it was just the idea in the wider world this is a link to the how that idea is represented within this text specifically the other thing that i've done in this sentence the other thing that i do in this sentence other than just linking the text is to set up what the rest of the paragraph will be about right and these three things here juxtaposition european attitudes indigenous understanding is reflected in the next three paragraphs here this one's about the european attitudes this one's about the indigenous understanding, and this one's uh, just showing a juxtaposition, a juxtaposition between the two, right? So European ownership, that's this entire section, uh, European ownership. And this one is indigenous oneness that's this entire section here and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna reread them because my voice is getting tired but <laughs> you can if you reread them you can basically see that this is all just talking about the european attitude this one's all just talking about the indigenous attitude and this one is uh not talking about like any any one of them in isolation, but it's it's all about showing a, a juxtaposition between the two. It's it's re-emphasizing the entire point of the paragraph, 
which is to show or it's re-emphasizing a, a very crucial point of what we said what i said in my in uh, in this idea sentence right so land is of significance to many cultures in this one i oh that's the wrong color why didn't you pick me up on it jeez <laughs> stupid okay that's supposed to be yellow uh so land is of significance to many cultures this part of the idea sentence has been addressed in this section uh, that's yucky has been addressed in this section of the of the paragraph right land is of significance to many cultures how is it significant to european culture well it's significant in this way they see it as ownership they they, they uh European attitude is that you can own the land, you can have control over the land, um, it can be your land, right? So I've shown how it's significant to the European culture. The next sub, uh, the, the next section of the paragraph is the European, sorry, not the European, the indigenous understanding of oneness with the land. So this is how land is significant to the, cult, to the indigenous culture, right? So I've addressed this first point of the idea sentence within these two paragraph, uh, these two sections of the paragraph and then however the attitude towards what land is varies between these cultures this section of the idea sentence i have addressed in this section of the paragraph this is all just talking about how it varies between the cultures or highlighting how it varies between the cultures and then the final the final uh section of the paragraph is a pretty standard conclusion where you basically restate what the what you said in your idea sentence right so in the idea sentence i said land is of significance to many cultures however the attitude towards what land is varies between these cultures whereas down here i said land is a significant part of the cultural identity of both european and indigenous australians so i like you can see how important the idea sentence is like the idea sentence is extremely important that's why i put so much emphasis on it because not only is it uh, uh, setting you up not not only is it, is it setting the reader up to to give like context to what you're about to talk about but it's also setting you up to know how to structure the rest of your paragraph like if you in an exam if you just start writing about all this stuff you're going to get confused but if you write like a relatively short sharp sentence that like that summarizes this entire thing you're gonna like at least i i felt confident if you write that one sentence down and you can have a mem you can have a bunch of these memorized right um because it's very it's very easy you'll feel once you write that down you'll feel confident and you'll have an idea of what you're going to talk about and then the link to the text is really where uh you can uh write down how you're going to structure the rest of the paragraph so the yeah these two sentences are very crucial not just for the presentation to the reader, but crucial for you when you're writing a paragraph. That's why I use this structure. Then the last part, Jim's perfunctory dismissal of Albert's indigenous intuitive understanding of the land leads down the wrong path and contributes to the tragic loss of Emily. And so this sentence I used, I most likely used as a link to the next paragraph, which would have been about the universal significance of family and life, which I'll go through in the next video. Okay, so couple tips in the description i've put two videos of how to study effectively i think they're incredibly important not just for english but for any single subject that you do right any single subject that you do because highlighting and rereading that's that's okay but the the best way to to study the best way to ingrain things in your mind like the, the, particularly in english right it's pretty dependent on memorization so you want to get this stuff drilled into your mind and the way that you do that is through a uh, is through a technique called active recall, right? And active recall is basically just practicing remembering things. It's bringing stuff out of your uh, of your mind and putting it onto a piece of paper or speaking it out loud. I really like doing mind maps for English because I think uh, it's it's a pretty good way to show the conceptual links between different ideas. Find your own quotes, develop your own ideas, use some of these, use all of these. I don't care. I, I'm done. I got my mark. Um, yeah, anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Good luck. I know you'll do well. Well, I don't know that, but I trust you'll do well if you have access to this, to this video. See you in the next one.